Welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the dark room to use the Ilford reversal process for black and white film. Well, despite our best efforts, my family and I uh, ended up getting the 19, and so we are in quarantine with nothing to do. So I thought I would try this out and uh, see what it looks like. So I took a few studio shots of myself, because I'm the one that feels the best run here. Um, and uh, we're just going to try this out on FOMA 8x10. This is FOMA 100, repackaged as Arista 100. Uh, and we're just going to see what it looks like. I'll make a big 8x10 uh, black and white slide, basically. So I went to Ilford's website. I printed off a copy of their reversal process instructions, and that's what we're going to follow. It's a little bit different than just a standard black and white negative process of develop, stop, fix. There's a few added steps. So the first developer, which is going to make a negative image, is going to be Ilford PQ Universal Print Developer. And we're going to mix this at one to five. So one part concentrate to five parts water. And to that, we're going to add just a pinch of sodium thiosulfate, so plain hypo. Don't try to use a powdered fixer. Don't try to use a rapid fixer. Just plain hypo crystals. You can get them cheap from a pool supply company. Uh, take something like 12, mm, 12 grams to make a liter of solution, something like that. So not a lot. Then you need a bleach. Potassium ferrocyanide bleach cannot be used. That's rehalogenating. We're going to be exposing this film back to light again. And so you will get just a black piece of film. Don't do that. Instead, you want to use a potassium permanganate bleach. That's this stuff right here. It stains everything purple and it's statically charged. So it'll zip to anything that it can stick to. So I recommend mixing that up first, separate from everything else to keep everything clean, wipe it down and um, put it aside while you mix all the rest afterwards. That's going to be part A of the bleach. Part B is battery acid. So sulfuric acid, 10 milliliters, which you can measure out with just a cheap little syringe from the pharmacy. Um, add it to water to make half a liter of stock. You're then going to do equal parts A and B, the acid and the permanganate, to make a liter of working solution. Uh, you'll you need to mix that uh, working solution each time you do a roll because it's only good for one. After that, you're going to need a clearing bath to get rid of the bleach um, as well as clear out any staining. So sodium metabisulfite, uh, this is used in TF4 alkaline fixer to make it alkaline. Uh, do not use sodium bisulfite. That's acidic, won't do the job. You want sodium metabisulfite. Uh, after that, it's standard black and white stuff. So it's developer, uh, a rinse, and then a fix. <clears throat> so again, we're going to use the Ilford PQ Universal, but you're going to mix it at 1 to 9 for the second developer. And then just a standard rapid fix like normal. Photo flow, wash, or wash, photo flow, and then dry. Uh, okay, so I want to load up the film and we're going to come back. Um, I've already got everything mixed up, so we're going to skip that step simply to save time. Just follow the directions um, if you're going to try this at home. Uh, real quick, there are other options. There is the Agfa Scala process, is a different process that comes as a kit, but I don't know about its availability in the US. Um, and then there is the Kodak Direct Positive Kit. They're discontinued. Some people have been finding them and trying to use them. But there is also formulas published by Kodak to replace it. The chemicals are very, very hard to get. They use a chemical fogging agent instead of actual fogging to light. Um, so if you want to do that, go for it. Just the quality of chemicals you have to get are pretty hard to source and they're very expensive when you do. So just be aware, this is probably going to be the easier process. Um, aside from that, it's not that hard. It's just going to take some time. So let's go ahead, move the camera, load up the film and go through the steps. We have the film loaded up in here. 
gonna need this. Got my first developer, bleach, bleach additive. We'll mix those up together in a few minutes. Uh, clearing bath, second developer, fixer. The time recommended is 12 minutes for the first developer. Uh, I'm going to tell you from my first couple of tries, that is too long. So the longer you develop the first developer, the less silver there is for the final image. So if your final image is too light, you develop too long. So instead of 12 minutes, I'm actually going to do six. Let's set the timer for six. And that's just based off the experience of the other two that I've already played with. And we'll show you those at the end. So we are ready to go. I'm at 68 degrees here, but let's double check. And that's Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. And while we're checking that, we can go ahead and put these together. They're not going to react or anything. It's just you get one use out of it. Yeah, it looks like we're good there. All right, we are ready. You're going to want to wear gloves. This is going to make a mess. Okay, so first step, developer. Now I'm using the cup inside of this so I can fill it up. It won't actually touch the film until I tip it over. All right, so we'll tip it, timer, and now we agitate. I'm not going to make you watch the whole six minutes. We will skip ahead to the end, but just know I want to be doing this for six minutes. Okay, we've got about 15 seconds left. We're going to pour this out, man, about the five second mark, and then do a five minute running water wash. Yep, there's that foam of green. So what we'll do is five fill and dump uh, with one minute rotation between each. That'll work. Okay, done with our fifth round. Uh, the last one, the fourth one, was the first one to actually be clear water coming back out. So it definitely has some stuff to get out of here. Time for bleach. Five minutes. After this step, Everything can be done with the room lights on. All right, we have just a few seconds left on our bleach. We're gonna pour it out. We're gonna rinse it off with some water. Then we're gonna open the lid. After the bleach, it is now safe to open the lid. Got some spillage already, which is why we have that tray here. Now you want to give it a minute of running water rinse to get as much bleach off as possible. I'm doing some of the water rinse here in the drum to kind of rinse the drum out as well, but we're actually going to do a rinse in a tray. So let me grab a tray here there we go you're gonna swap pour out the bulk of our waste Here's our film, and we're going to do a water rinse. Now let's just rinse off the bulk of our bleach. Do need to be careful because the emulsion is fragile. 
especially since it's FOMA and it's already fragile. I will warn you, the second developer is going to make the emulsion extremely soft. So be very, very careful handling your film. If it's on a roll or a spiral, it'll be a lot easier. Okay. All right, now we're going to do our clearing step. This is for two minutes. It's already started working immediately. Because it is strongly alkaline, it will neutralize any remaining bleach. for a minute. We're going to re-expose. I'm just going to do it here in the, uh, the tray. And what I have is just my inspection light. I took it down from the ceiling. And we're just going to expose that for about uh, 30 seconds to a minute. To make sure I hit the whole thing. I'm holding it about 12 to 18 inches above the negative. I just want to make sure I get all the corners, the center. Don't try to take this out in the sun, it could actually start to print out. The instructions say about 18 inches, 30 seconds for a 100 watt bulb. This is something like 120 watt. Maybe a 75, I don't know. You can go longer. I won't go the full minute. If you are afraid that it's not long enough, just do a little more. Just do it before you develop. Okay. Now the second developer. And this is gonna be for six minutes, but it's not super time critical. You can definitely go longer than six minutes because we are really just going to be developing every bit of the image that's left. Whatever silver is remaining, we want to develop to completion. So develop as long as you like. Now, if your image, when it's done, is not dark enough, that means your first developer was too long. So my first attempt, which I'll show you my first two attempts, were 12 minutes and then eight minutes respectively. And this is six minutes in the first developer. So this is already a bit darker than the other two. Some of it has to do with your exposure. The more overexposed you are, the lighter your final image will become as well. This is exposed uh, at 125 because my usual exposure is 64. So this is one stop underexposed. It is meant to be a little bit dramatic. It also looks very dark in the tray. Remember, this is the slide. So we'll look at it on the light box when it's done. Okay. 
wash for a minute. We're not going to use an acid stop today, just in case we have any sort of bubbling of the emulsion. We don't want that. And then we'll fix. And fix on oh about three minutes. Technically, there shouldn't be any fixable silver. No, that's not true. All the negative image is still in there. We are fixing that out. The positive image is what's left as metallic silver. The negative image is now being fully removed. Had we used a ferrous cyanide bleach, that second developer after the exposure would have just made this a pure black piece of film with no image. Okay, after this we're going to wash, photo flow, dry, and then we'll come back and look at the final result on the light box. Okay, now that we've got everything done, let's get the light box and take a look. Try not to hit any cords here. All right, there's my Kaiser Slim box here. And I'll show you the three that I've... I'll show you the three that I finished. Here's the first one. And it's hard to see. Let's uh, see if I can turn the brightness down. So it's just backlit enough. There we are. Okay. Oop. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. So that's attempt number one. That was for 12 minute development time. They were all exposed exactly the same. That's an ASA or ISO 125. So this is a 12 minute development time on the first developer. And you can see here the damage from just touching it with the fingertip uh, after the second developer. <clears throat> okay, here's number two. So this is eight minute development time. There you go. Much better. It is still, I think, a little weak in the blacks. So that's why I did this last one with a six minute development time. We'll take a look at that. I treated this one a little bit better handling, but I still got the corner, the emulsion off when I picked it up to move it to the fixer tray. All right, and here is the six minute development time. So again, Less development is going to leave more silver to become black. It is fairly dense. It's still a little weak. That is probably where I need to start experimenting with the ISO setting, the correct ISO setting here. But that is much better. I'm going to make this just a touch brighter. There we go. And I think that worked out pretty well. Um, the development's a little uneven. That's from using the Jobo tank. That's not really what it's designed for. Uh, an 8x10 print would be fine, but film, it's a little too finicky. Um, but it's just for fun, really. Uh, but you can see I still have some emulsion damage here. This is when I picked it up to hang it up with a clip, and then I got some damage on the clip itself. But this, the emulsion literally just slid off when I touched the, uh, the film. So very, very, very fragile. Now, aside from those, I have this roll of T-Max 100 that I developed. This is actually the first attempt on any of it. And I bracketed my exposure. Oops, I'll turn it off. So this is one stop overexposed from box speed. Two stops. Let's swap hands here. So one stop, or two stops over, one stop over, box speed here. Get this closer for you. Box speed here, one stop underexposed, two stops underexposed. 
And while it may be difficult to tell here on the light box and the video camera, the one stop and two stop underexposed start to look the best. Uh, these are all the 12 minute development time um, on the first developer step. Um, now, of course, which one looks right depends on how bright this light box is. Okay. Because right now the one stop looks best. If I turn this all the way up, well, then the two stop looks best because it's uh, washing the shadows out when it's a brighter. Um, a brighter light panel then I took some portraits of my kid when I was outside he's looking through the window and again box speed here it looks a little dark but it's exposed for the outside of the house and he was inside the one stop and two stop were probably the right exposure for the outside of the house I would have had to re um, remeasure to expose correctly for him and I didn't So that is the Ilford reversal process. Not difficult, but there are a few steps that you're gonna to have to add and some chemicals you're going to have to get to do it, but it comes out with some good results. Now, why would you do an RA reversal for black and white? You're not gonna print from that necessarily. And a negative is going to give you a lot more dynamic range to print from anyway. So it's not like you're going to do this process, which is extra steps and all that come out with a limited dynamic range to then make a print on the direct positive paper. That's kind of backwards. Um, but if you do have a special project where you need to make a negative print instead of a positive print, then doing this to create a positive image, which is now your negative, you can print from that, create a negative image. Uh, another thing you could do like these, they are eight by 10 originals you can then display that on a light box or light panel as the final piece uh, if you have some creative project where that would be appropriate otherwise it's more of a novelty uh, at least for anything that i would do it might be a novelty if you're going to scan your film or scan with a dslr to get it digitized yes this avoids the whole issue of converting but converting a black and white image is far easier than converting a ne uh, color negative image. So there's no real advantage there. It's just some extra steps. So there may be creative reasons why you might choose to do this. If you do, then those are the steps. Your two factors that you can change to control the density and contrast are going to be your exposure and your first development time. The less exposure you have, the darker they become the less development you have, the darker they become. So just keep that in mind, play around a little bit, and I think you can get a good handle on it and make some interesting images. So thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe out there because the 19 will get you one way or the other if you're not careful, as it did with me. So uh, stay safe, get some darkroom time, make some photographs, and we'll see you next time.